Welcome. In today's video, we're going to be completely going through the fuel system on the square body to get it squared away for our future adventures. <music> We're going to be practically replacing everything in the fuel system. We're going to be replacing the tank, all of the rubber hoses that go to the solid fuel lines. We're going to be replacing each fuel sender in both of the tanks, just so they're revamped and brand new. We're going to be replacing the rubber lines, the hose clamps. We're going to be doing a quick disconnect for the electric fuel pump, which I know it has a mechanical fuel pump, but just in the meantime, we're going to be using the electric fuel pump and then one day I will replace the mechanical pump. We're going to be replacing the tank switcher and then we're going to be making sure our switch in the cab works so we can successfully switch between each tank and uh, you know have the full potential of having 40 gallons of fuel on this truck instead of just 20. The first step after I disconnect the negative battery cables is I'm going to pump the fuel out of the only working tank into the gas cans then from there, I can start disconnecting lines and uh, drop in the tank. So it turns out I had a lot more fuel in this tank than I imagined. I mean, that five gallon jug is almost full. And then I have two five gallon gas cans off to the side that are full also. So I damn near had 20 gallons worth of diesel in this tank when I thought I had a lot less. But while that is, uh, you know, kind of siphoning, it's flowing on its own into the jug. I am removing the fuel filler necks on each tank and just disconnecting everything. So I am working while that is working. I do have all of the hard lines going from each tank soaking right now just to get all the crud and the nastiness and the grease off of them. But in the meantime, I have pulled off the filler necks also and I will be saving the vent lines because the only spot I could find them is on LMC truck and they are expensive. So I'm gonna salvage these, but I did get new filler neck hoses. But while everything is soaking, I am going to pull off this tank, the working tank. It is uh, still has a little bit of fuel in it, but not too much. Uh, I had definitely a little bit over 20 gallons of diesel in it. So I will be splitting that between the two tanks as a function test once I have everything back together. But in the meantime, I will be dropping this tank just to fully clean it up. And then I did buy some gray primer spray paint to paint the tank once I have it clean, just as a protection for it so it doesn't rust up or anything like that. So I will be dropping this tank and if I run into anything, I will get you guys. I spent about an hour to an hour and a half cleaning the gas tank hangers. And here is the fuel tank that is good. But honestly, the time spent for the hangers and all of the work used to get those clean enough to paint, it's gonna take me five times longer to clean this tank. So I honestly think I'm just gonna buy a second a brand new tank, just for the peace of mind of knowing I have a brand new tank that is coated on the outside and to save me all the time cleaning this tank. But I will get the rest of the diesel out of it. Then moving over here, I got all of the hardware cleaned and everything and laying out on the table to dry. And then here is the fuel lines, the fuel filler necks, and the vent hoses I cleaned. And going over here, here is the hangers. I will be painting these along with the frame, but I have to clean the frame where the tanks go, so they are clean enough to paint. But uh, that is the update so far. So after cleaning the hangers and everything, I completely cleaned the frame in the spots where the fuel tanks will go and I put a coat of paint on them, at least on the outside where the tank will be contacting the frame surface. I did not paint the inside because I will be doing exhaust and everything in the near future. So I will be cleaning that and putting a coat of paint on the inside. But the outside is painted and cleaned. So we are ready to get this wiring fixed to put a quick disconnect on the fuel pump, put in the new tank switcher, and just start plumbing everything together along with putting new wrap on the wires. And then after I'm done with all of that, we will be putting the tank in. 
or both tanks in. So the next step in the process is I'm going to make my fuel pump a quick disconnect in case we ever have an issue with it on the trail. It could just be a quick disconnect to change it out to keep us going. Along with I'm going to make a quick disconnect for my backup 12 volt fuel pump since this one is still working. And I bought a dozen of these pigtails that are quick disconnect and waterproof off Amazon. So if you are interested in these, I will have a link down below to them. So I'm going to be connecting this side, you know, to the positive and negative. And then I'm going to connect this to the power wire coming from my power source under the hood. And then I'm going to connect this to the ground and I'm going to ground it off somewhere on the body. So then it'll, this pump will be grounded and have the power run to it. And I'll be able to just quick disconnect it whenever I want if we ever have this pump go out on us. Well, here we are. We are at the point of installing the tanks. I got everything cleaned up. I got the grounds exposed. I took some paint off. I did wrap the wire in some loom, the loom tape, so it is nice and protected. I will have to finish wrapping this one a little bit and then that one is finished. Here is the pigtail that goes to the fuel pump that leads over to the ground down there. Everything will get zip tied to the side and everything once I get everything put in and good to go. Here we are. Uh, we're done with this project. I'll go over everything I did since the last update. Um, I bolted the hangers to the body and then put the tanks in instead of putting the hangers on the tanks and then bolting them into the frame, which was extremely hard. So I put the hangers on first. Then from there, I plumbed in both fuel senders and I used rubber hose for each of them for the entire way instead of using the old hard lines. I figured, you know, having a rubber hose, a hard line back to a rubber hose is just more splits and more hose clamps which could possibly lead to more leaks in the future. So I just used, you know, single piece ho uh, rubber hose with hose clamps on each end and it worked out fine. Zero leaks with this whole setup so far. So I did that f all the way to the tank switcher for both tanks. And then from there, I had an issue with the pigtail, the OEM pigtail and the aftermarket or new sender. The ground that was on the end of the pigtail would not reach the ground on the sender. So what I had to do was chop the ground off of the pigtail just so we don't have an excess wire. And then I cut the end of the rubber for the pigtail off right there. That would go to the blade on the sender. And then I just ran my own ground wire to the point in the frame that it was at before. And then from there, I just would tuck everything in or I just tucked everything in and it should be nice and protected and it is nice and tight on there and I have everything shrink wrapped and good to go so it should be pretty water resistant or waterproof but I got everything plumbed in with rubber hoses everything hose clamped and then we'll get underneath to the tank switcher and I'll show you my setup down there all right here is the setup I have the electronic fuel pump before the tank switcher, which actually works out. So it is just one fuel pump for both tanks. So I had zero issues with this setup too. And I do have this hard line cut for the uh, backup fuel pump because the backup fuel pump had a inline filter on it, which made it a little bit longer. So I measured it and cut it for that. So if we ever have an issue on the trail, it'll be extremely easy to switch it out and I don't have to worry about cutting any hard line or anything. Then from there, I have everything completely hooked up to the tank switcher. These two lines, this is the return and this is the feed line from the driver's side tank. And then this is the return and the feed line from the passenger side tank. All the connections are tight and good. And then from there, I have my pigtail that goes to my fuel pump that I wrapped in my, you know, my electrical fabric tape. And then I have it zip, line, uh, zip tied, not zip lined, zip tied along the support right here for the cab uh, bushings along with the hoses. So nothing should get in the way 
and uh, you know be hit by the drive shaft or the exhaust or anything. So this is the setup. It was extremely easy once I got the right lines plumbed in and then I got the fuel pump hooked up. So let's get into fully testing it and uh, showing you guys the setup. All right, let's get in here to see if the fuel pump is working just fine. Perfect. I can hear from outside the cab. It is actually kind of loud, but it is working. I hear it pumping. So awesome. And I also did replace the switch on the dash because the original switch was in two pieces, pretty much clipped together, but just the internals were broken on this thing. So I fully replaced the tank switch also. And uh, yeah, we're good to go. So now let's start it up and let's uh, switch tanks to see if the gas gauge fully works. Perfect, we're going. Well, we have it set up for the left-hand tank, which is the driver's side tank and the fuel gauge is working. Let me get you guys a better view. The fuel gauge is working. We are right below three quarters of a tank. So let's switch it to the right tank and uh, let's see if the tank switcher works and the fuel gauge works for the right side. So let's switch it. There we go, it's slowly moving. Yes, that makes me so happy that this works. I thought it was gonna be a giant pain, but uh, we got lucky with this one with uh, both pickups working, you know, the switch working, everything being just fine, having no leaks other than, uh, you know, me needing to cut the original pigtail and, you know, take it apart and run my own ground. This went pretty painless other, you know, because I had to replace everything, but it is good to go. So we are good. I'm glad that uh, I had enough fuel in the right tank to, uh, you know, pretty much put half to three quarters of a tank in both of them. So it won't cost me as much for our next adventure in this truck, but I am glad this thing is good to go. So we are fully done with this setup. And uh, yeah. Perfect. All right, I am glad this project is done. You know, both tanks work, they read the fuel levels just fine, and I'm extremely happy about that. Just the biggest issue was cleaning again, making sure everything was clean, everything was plumbed right and done right the first time, so we had no leaks or electrical issues to figure out. So if you've gotten this far, I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you guys do have any comments on if you would have done anything different, if you had a square body or to your square body, or you know you have any suggestions for the next project for this truck, just let me know down below in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.